internet! Welcome to Food Theory, where when life hands you lemons, you make lemonade, but when life hands you small green leaves from Asia, you make tea. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of year. The weather is getting colder, the nights are getting longer, and we all have our favorite hot drink that we like to cuddle up on the couch with. Sometimes it's coffee, sometimes it's hot cocoa, but if you're one special member of Team Theorist... My wife, Steph, it's almost certainly gonna be a cup of freshly brewed tea. No exaggeration, she's going through like three or four cups a day. Probably three to four cups of tea a day. See, I'm not making this stuff up. No joke, the dishwasher is just full of tea mugs, which is like, what you doing, Steph? Just rinse them out. Save the actual space in there for stuff that's hard to wash. Sorry, am I, am I getting a little bit too real for you? Anyway, if you watch our channels, you know by now that we're optimizers. We wanna use data and testing to give us the best possible experiences in all parts of our our life, and that includes our warm leaf water. So today, we're in the kitchen breaking down the elements of this simple drink to give you the perfect cup of tea. Do seemingly arbitrary steps like whether the water or the milk goes into the cup first actually result in a noticeably different tasting tea? And perhaps most importantly of all, if there is a detectable difference, what's the objectively best way to prepare your tea? Bottoms up, theorists! It's time to get this party started. Sorry if that joke wasn't high enough quality. Quality. Even I feel a little bit guilty about that one. Drink up, friends, because today is going to be full of highbrow drinks with lowbrow puns. Today is going to be my favorite episode of Food Theory, maybe ever. It's going to be terrific. And while Steph is certainly our local tea expert, I am steeped in the stuff. You could say that she is queen tea. I'm practically fermented myself. There is one thing that she lacked, the international perspective. She merely adopted tea, but others, they were born in it, molded by it. We needed someone British. So, uh, Tom, <laughs> You being from the UK, obviously you know tea. That is part of your curriculum. You have reading, writing, arithmetic, and, and tea. tea. Yes, it is a special tea of ours. Tom's usually heading up things over in game theory land where the closest tea gets to food is writing about mutant cows with Happy Meat Farms ARG or cannibalism in the visual novel Cooking Companions. Let's just say this is a nice change of pace for him. So with our crack team assembled, we dove into our investigation. Now, how us Americans make tea can be a bit of a controversial topic, especially for people coming from the UK. So to get things started, I pulled out this gem of a video from at jshell36, an American woman that's living over in the UK who demonstrated how she makes her afternoon tea. And uh, let's just say I'm using some heavy air quotes with that word. I I'm curious, since we have a resident UK expert here, we have some uh, American families making British tea, and I'd love your opinion. I can't imagine this ever possibly going wrong. No, I, this is gonna be entirely factual. Here you go. <laughs> Yep. You need help. No, no, that's oh, all no, right. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no, no. Why is no. It, why are you going in the microwave? Why would you do that? No, what milk? What? Whoa! No, what? That's so much milk. No, that's so much milk. It's oh, just no. Light. Oh, oh no. no. It's a video that went viral in the UK as people became so outraged that even national newspapers reported on it. So of course, I had myself a bright idea. Let's do a taste test, okay. shall we? Yes. Okay. I think we start off with Tom making his proper British cup of tea. Okay. Since you feel very strongly about uh, that. I do. And I will make TikTok tea. <laughs> and I will taste both. And we got to work. I mean, seeing the way he functions in the kitchen makes this an even more like weird multiverse situation <laughs> that I'm dealing with between this one and this one. How does one open this bag? Just so we've covered our bases, at this point it's important to know that there are a ton of different teas out there in the world, ranging in areas from Japan to South Africa. But today, we're collectively lifting our pinkies only to the classic British. And that means that we're gonna exclusively be talking about and testing black tea, most of which originally comes from this little corner of India right here called the Assam region. The preparation of traditional British tea typically involves using water boiled in a kettle and immediately combined with tea directly into a teapot. Before serving, milk was historically added to the bottom of the teacup, tea was poured on top, swirl, and boom, you're done. This was the classy tea that Tom set out to make. Meanwhile, I was relegated to shoveling sugar into my cup for my TikTok tea. I would just like to point out that they're still trying to open the tea bag. My microwave is all done with heated water, so right now TikTok tea is looking pretty good. Oh, that's hot. Um, Ooh, that is hot. <laughs> Handle so hot. The time it takes to heal those third degree burns gives us time to finish the proper British tea. Now I pour the milk in. <laughs> Drop in the tea. <laughs> What's so bad? It's, 
<laughs> that tea bag is so sad to be in there. He's like, like, no. Why am I here? Why am I here? <laughs> After a few minor burns, it was time to taste. No. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> Not a shocker. We determined that TikTok is better for spilling the tea than actually drinking the tea. Meanwhile, Tom's baseline British tea it tasted nice. It was fine. There we are. Such a British reaction. Anyway, I still wasn't satisfied. It's not enough to just say that TikTok tea is lame and any old tea bag you throw around can beat it. Anyone can do that. This channel is built on the premise that I can overthink anything and then write it off as a business expense. So if we're gonna make tea, we're gonna be making the best tea. And to do that, we have to build the best cup of tea from the ground up using science. So what we decided to do was break down all the variables that go into a cup of tea so we could test them one at a time. First, what's the best shape and material for your tea bags, if any? Secondly, we gotta talk about milk. How much milk should you be putting into your tea? Third, order of events. Should you put hot water in the cup first or cool milk? Fourth, how long should you be steeping your tea for? And lastly, what's the best vessel to hold on to your tea? Does your cup actually make a difference in your taste? experience. Oh boy, we're gonna make a lot of Brits mad at us for this one. Looks like leaves aren't the only thing in hot water today. Take it away, live action Matt Pat. So first off, I want to just ask the question of, hey, you got the flat paper tea bags. You have the pyramidal tea bags. And you've got loose leaf tea. Right, so which of these is ultimately gonna lead you to a best? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I accidentally gripped that. So to eliminate all other variables, we're using three identical mugs. We've heated the water to the ideal temperature for black tea specifically, and we're gonna steep them all for exactly three minutes. So everyone, tea bags at the ready, or tea baubles at the ready. Three, two, one, dip. And now we wait for three minutes, and I sweep up the loose leaf tea that uh, Tom just flung across the kitchen. I flung it at him actually, to be fair. So while Tom and Steph watch me clean up their mess, let me explain why this one factor alone may be more important here than you think. Tea leaves actually have permeable membranes, which means that when you add hot water, that hot water can essentially go through the leaves in a process called osmosis, allowing the chemicals that give tea its signature aroma and flavor, flavanols and polyphenols, to infuse with the water. 3D pyramid-shaped tea bags are supposed to be better for this particular process, as it gives the tea leaves more room to move around during the brewing process. This allows water to permeate the leaves from all sides. Flat tea bags, meanwhile, don't expand, stopping the tea leaves from infusing properly and leaving you with a dense glob of wet leaf mush. But that can't really make that big of a difference, right? You yeah. can tell that there's just a color difference by looking at them. It's crazy. The flavor of the tea is, is good. It's mild. It's like, it's nice. Yep, so immediately that's better. Yeah, yep. there's, there, shockingly, shockingly, there is a clear difference between paper and the loose leaf. Just like you would expect off of the color, this one is by far the strongest. Oh yeah, definitely. It, it's it's yep. a very clear flavor difference. So interesting. This is wild. I did not expect this. Oh to make wow, a yeah, no, that is. Oh, it's wow. much stronger. Right? Yeah. And once again, I was left blown away by the results. Remember, we used the same amount of tea coming from the same brand of leaves, and still, the bag did indeed make a difference. The paper bag restricted the movement of the leaves, so they just sat in a clump at the bottom, while the bauble and pyramid bag were nicely diffused. But when it came to overall taste, our winner was unanimous. In a surprise upset, the pyramid bag was everyone's favorite cup. Better diffused while still maintaining a strong, but not over tannin filled flavor which left us with one last serving vessel to test teapots all right now comes the battle of the champions my friends we've got pyramid bag versus teapot loosely floating around in there steep until its heart's content like a little sauna day for the tea leaves inside of the hot water wow 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 I mean that's really what it is they're going to the gym they're stripping down into their skivvies and they're hopping in with a bunch of the other you know Sweaty guys. <laughs> I don't really want to think of my tea as sweaty. And, and then I'm drinking, what, the juice <laughs> that's, that's left at the end? You're drinking the remnant pool water, yeah. <laughs> Can you tell that we've already had too much tea and it's only experiment one? Oh boy, it was a long shoot day. Anyway, the point of doing this final experiment was to test our newest winner against the time-honored tradition of tea in a teapot. So we filled both our mug and teapot with the same amount of hot water, let them both steep for another three minutes. Go, little buddies. There it is. Enjoy your gym time. And then got to sip in. And while the flavor was largely the same, there was one unexpected difference. It's hotter. 
It's, it's significantly hotter. The tea in the mug was hotter. Brewing of the teapot had actually cooled the tea enough that it was sitting at a perfect sippable temperature. Is that just due to the teapot and the fact that there's, you know, more I surface think so. area? No, but I think that's exactly it. I love it when food theory episodes completely take me off guard because I didn't expect this to make any sort of difference whatsoever. I thought these two would basically be equivalent, but there is a significant heat difference. So I think that ultimately seals the deal. The traditional way, the British way, is indeed the best. It's almost like there's a reason it's been around for several hundred years. Go figure. It's like they already optimized this thing years ago and we're just reiterating the fact. Ah, those darn millennials always thinking they know better and trying to reinvent the system. Anyway, after round one, pyramid bags and teapots were the big winners. So having figured out the optimal way to steep, it was time Time to measure the optimal time to steep. You see, brew time matters due to the release of those taste molecules named polyphenols, specifically the harder, stronger variants called tannins. Tannins are super bitter, which means the longer you let your tea brew, the more tannins that you're releasing into the drink. This is also why you shouldn't squeeze tea bags into the mug after you're done brewing. This directly releases concentrated tannic acid, which adds a bitter punch to your cup. So brewing tea is basically a balancing act of letting the leaves float around for long enough to get a good amount of flavor in there, but not having them soak for so long that they wind up doing the tea equivalent of peeing in the pool. So where does that inflection point sit? Well, the UK Tea Academy, which apparently is a thing, has three recommendations depending on the size of your tea leaves. Small particles like tea bags should steep for one and a half to two minutes. Medium leaves should be closer to two to three minutes. And if you're talking about whole leaves, that's a whopping three to five minutes steep time. But we don't want ranges, we want exact numbers. So we ran a round of experiments to steep the tea for one, three, and five minutes. With the new experiment set, we fired up the water for what we thought was gonna be an overall pointless endeavor. You can tell that there's a very clear color difference between the one minute steep and the three minute steep. Between three and five though, uh, not so much. Am I missing anything, guys? I mean, there is a slight film, which is, there is a little bit here as well, but yeah. this is a little bit stronger and of varying varieties, it would mm. seem, but it, that typically I would associate with an overbrewed tea. I like it a lot better than the yeah. one minute, personally. One minute, great if you like weak tea. But yeah, that's that's way better. It's yeah. much better, way right? Better. And then finally, Tom thinks that this is gonna be overbrewed because of that film. And I see the film that you're talking about. Yeah, mm. you can see it. It's like little, just little splotches on top. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that aftertaste is mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. bitter. It's really strong. That's, yeah. Wow! That makes sense. In the end, as expected, three minutes was the perfect time. Full of flavor, but without dipping into the bitter notes that tea can often have. But leaf soup is only half the ingredients. To make a true English tea, we have to add some milk. So how much milk you add to your tea is actually a bit tricky to find evidence for. The US-based tea company recommends that it should be one part milk to four parts tea. For an average mug of 240 milliliters, that's talking 48 milliliters of milk. That is a lot, especially when you compare that to your average average tea drinker in the UK. One study done across the pond reported that, on average, tea drinkers would add the very scientific amount of a splash. The study found that a splash actually translated to about five milliliters of milk to a cup of tea. So that's one part milk for every 47 parts tea. As you can see, there is a huge difference between those numbers. So yet again, we put our conditions to the test. But we also mixed in a third contender, splitting the difference between the two by only using 26 and a half milliliters. Sadly, I couldn't enjoy this part of tea time myself. I had some very important meetings to attend to. I've got a merch meeting. I'll be back for the next test. Anyway, I was glad to leave because apparently my thoughts on milk and tea were not appreciated by the room. Also, can definitively say, best milk is no milk and tea. Oh, get so, out of so here. Get out of here. Go, 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 go. go. Yeah. So with the correct opinion ignored, Steph and Tom got to work, brewing up the three different cups and right off the bat, the differences were clear. Looks though mean nothing if they don't taste good. I like it, but it's not quite enough milk for me. If you're adding milk to mellow it, that's not doing the job. This is exactly what I expect from milk tea. Like this is it. Maybe it'll be maybe it'll be too much for you. No, that's probably no, that's about right. That is typically how I'd have my tea, but that is again trying to put my personal preferences out the window and go yeah. right, what is actually a better experience? That is definitely coming up, up, up above that for sure. Yeah. That one that one's a little too much for me. 
Yeah, so you're starting to lose tea flavor once you get to this one. Now we're getting into TikTok territory. There we go. Need, we're starting to get, at least it's warm up. Once again, the middle option proved to be the best. So with three experiments out of the way, we were finally into the home stretch. A pyramid bag or teapot steeped for three minutes with a medium amount of milk. But wait, friends, we still weren't done with the milk. It's not just about the amount of milk. It's also about whether or not to put that milk at the top or bottom of the cup. Honestly, I'd never heard this one before, but apparently putting milk in first was a thing in the early days of British tea drink. Those who couldn't afford high-end porcelain would have cheaper cups to drink out of, and if you poured the boiling water into those cups, they would be more likely to chip or crack. Apparently, adding in chilled milk as the first thing in the cup helped to regulate the overall temperature and thereby protect the cup. Nowadays, though, we live in an age where mugs are just a dime a dozen. Seriously, these things are like rabbits multiplying in my cabinets. Every time I open up a cabinet, another ten mugs fall out. So in this new modern age, should British tea be updating its traditions? Where should that milk be going? Or does it make a difference? It can't make a difference, right? There really should not be a difference between No, the, there, there shouldn't, shouldn't be. be. But once we took a sip, it immediately became clear that we were super wrong. Huh. Interesting. There's a difference. Oh, wow, there is. Right? <laughs> oh, there what? Is. There is. <laughs> to make sure we weren't losing our minds, we did a blind survey of our preference and we unanimously agreed. Milk poured on top was the superior option. There was a, a weird sour note mm -hmm. I got from that one. Yeah. And this one was bit more bitter. This one was yeah. smoother. You could taste the milk and mm. also the tea. Just smooth all the way down. This one just doesn't work as well no. as this one, which is crazy because it was literally just pouring the same thing on the top. We've yeah. also just upended the entire British history of tea of putting the milk in first. Yeah, I'm we sorry, have, buddy. this is true. Like the, the traditions need to stop. <laughs> I am actually really excited about that though, because mm. this whole time we've been building up to basically the conclusion of like, hey, the British, British. way is the right way, which, yeah. Yeah. you know, okay, fine. We bow to our overseas former overlords or whatever, <laughs> great. Here's our taxes. <laughs> but no, this there we go. changes everything. So get dunked on, old school country. <laughs> Science for the win. Yeah. Let this one hit all the headlines. You doing it wrong, son. So far, what we've wrapped up is that actually you don't need to spend a huge amount of time thinking about the order and what type of tea you're using. Mm. As long as you're using a pyramid shaped tea bag mm -hmm. with a decent quality of tea, mm -hmm. you just boil your water, make sure it's not the microwave, steep your tea for three minutes. Yeah, perfect. Add 26 milliliters of milk on top, just splash it on in there. There you go. And you're done. That's it. The perfect cup of tea. That one made us really excited. Not only had we thrown off centuries of British tea tradition, but it had also put us into the last phase of our grand experiment. Having perfected everything about the liquid inside the glass, it was now time to question the glass itself. What is the best thing to drink tea out of? So the final possible variable that we can think up here is delivery vessel. I told you, this is going into the minutia of minutia because Stephanie takes this seriously and Tom's national pride is on the line. So I have no horse in this race. I just stand for scientific excellence. This seems like something inconsequential, right? Don't worry about what kind of plate you're eating your food off of. So why with tea? Does it really make that big of a difference? Well, yeah, or at least that's what the science tells us. The Tea Box website in their series T101 states that the perfect vessel should be non-porous as porous cups absorb flavors from anything that you're putting in them. So your tea's flavor could actually be affected by all the other teas or coffees that you've previously had in side of that mug. Additionally, cups with wider rims and thin cup walls are gonna allow heat to escape faster and also won't retain as much aroma. And when you consider that 80% of what we taste comes from smell, that might be a significant factor. On one side we have a china cup, uh, which is sort of a classic, you know, English teacup sort of deal. We have a glass cup, which is known for not leaching anything from the liquid or exchanging anything from the liquid at all. And then we have ceramic over here, which is gonna be the most commonly used mug type. I'm gonna use the smallest one and just do my best to pour that amount into the other two, so that way we can maintain as consistent, mm. <laughs> consistent as possible. I just stand for scientific excellence. After one final round of steeping, we were ready. So we've got our three cups, all steeped, all milked. Now it's just time for them all to be tasted. And believe it or not, but we had ourselves a first for this episode. There was no difference. It was the only variable that didn't affect flavor. What the glasses did affect though, was heat. For me, 
All three tasted identical. Agree. The difference was actually temperature-wise. This one was the coolest and easiest to drink immediately, whereas glass was the hottest. I'm assuming that actually relates to the fact that this one has the widest opening along the top, so you're getting more exposure for the surface area, thereby cooling it faster. This is also insulated glass, which means when I touch the outside here, it's completely cool, but inside, it's actually keeping the liquid very hot. In summary, what did we learn today about making the optimum cup of tea. If I want to go viral on TikTok <laughs> and make headlines over in the UK, <laughs> how do I do that? So you're going to start by not putting your water in the microwave in a mug and then burning your hand off. You're gonna use a kettle. You're gonna use clear pyramid shaped tea bags so you can get a good quality tea rather than having to go for loose leaf or a flat paper one. Then you're going to steep it for three minutes, not one minute or five minutes. And then finally, you're going to add just enough milk, the, the Goldilocks of milk, which is in our estimation about 26 milliliters. And you add that in after you've poured the, the tea in. As we wrapped up a long morning of shoots, we learned that we weren't the only ones thirsty in the kitchen. <laughs> He's drinking from the avocado water. There he is. We've been trying to sprout that avocado for five weeks. In the end, it looks like the traditional British way of making tea actually has a lot of scientific backing to support it. All they need to do now is just pour their milk on top and they've got it. Maybe sometimes the best way to evolve a tradition is slowly. There you have it, friends. The optimum cup of tea by the world's most picky tea drinker and the world's most picky tea nation. Cheers. Why are you putting milk in this? <laughs> Still disagree. Needs sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not even a perfect cup of tea can please everyone. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Teach me how to say something in a, in a really good British accent. I mean, to be fair, your queen impression's quite good. Oh, thanks. I want to be able to just blend into, into the common folk. I can't be, you know, going around giving away that I'm royalty. Oh, okay. Royal tea. <laughs>